Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to the office. So today we're going to be answering a subscriber Q&A. It's going to be two questions. Um, I figured I'd just make a link, send it over to them and also upload it here, hopefully helping somebody else out. So with that, the two questions are the first one, uh, when should I start dosing calcium and alkalinity to my reef tank? Kind of new. They don't really know the methods that they should be using. So we'll go over some basic ones for them. And then two, when should I start dosing nitrates and phosphates and kind of how do I know when to start the whole process? So uh, with with that uh yeah the first one when to start dosing calcium and alkalinity to your reef tank now uh very simple process and very easy to think about so when we start a reef tank regardless of kind of how many corals we have uh it's those corals particularly like the hard corals the hard stony corals like sps lps even coralline algae they're going to consume calcium and alkalinity out of the reef tank just in general right so when we do a water change let's hypothetically say we have a 100 gallon tank we put in 20 frags maybe bought a frag pack from me for sale for 50 percent off check it out uh forgive me for that sorry uh, but anyways let's say you bought 20 frags and you have a 100 gallon tank and you are currently just doing a 20 uh, percent water change every two weeks right same salt same consistency 9 dkh that's where your reef tank stays at now what's going to happen is as those corals start to grow out over the next few weeks or months they're going to start consuming that calcium and alkalinity relatively quickly and more of it in a shorter period of time so our goal is to figure out what that fluctuation is so say you're at 9 dkh you test it on sunday and you're testing your alkalinity either via the trident every single day or maybe you're doing it by hand with a hanna at least once if not twice a week which i recommend at least a minimum of once now with that you're going to notice say you're at 9 dkh on sunday and then wednesday maybe you're at 8.5 and then you know friday or saturday you're at seven or sorry eight and then you know over the two week period you go from nine to seven dkh well that's a two point fluctuation in two weeks not really a big deal nothing too crazy and nothing i wouldn't really worry about so keeping your water change schedule of 20 percent is going to help that out now you could go ahead and do a 10 percent every week instead of 20 percent bi-weekly to help with that fluctuation meaning that instead of it going to maybe 70 kh it's just going to kind of stay at eight because you're doing that flux that water change sooner um and then obviously adding to the calcium alkalinity during that water change so basically long story short the fluctuation is what you need to look at testing consistently making sure that it doesn't you know get out of whack so 9 dkh in two weeks you're at seven at that point i would just keep doing the water changes but let's say you go from 9 dkh on sunday and you're at seven on friday well that's a pretty big dip that's pretty quick and within five days so at that point i would consider using something like uh, calc reactor maybe adding calc to your ato instead since it is cheaper more beginner friendly or you can start dosing two part or technically three part calcium alkalinity and magnesium i have a whole bunch of videos on that you guys can check out but either way at some at, at that point i would definitely recommend that you start dosing something so you avoid further fluctuations or bigger fluctuations or even bottoming out and getting sub seven or sub six dkh where you will probably start running into issues and killing off your coral so the main goal of dosing calcium alkalinity is just stability. That's really it. Now, how how strict and how st stable you want it to be is really a personal preference and kind of how your reef tank reacts. Some tanks can get away with that two week, that two DKH fluctuation in a week and be fine. My personally, my 300 personally would not do that. Um, it just wouldn't. No, it just would not. So. If I was to go ahead and turn off the calcium reactor and the calc reactor on my 300 or technically 500 with the frag tanks, if I was to turn that off for 24 hours, I'd probably crash my tank. Um, I haven't tried it because it's not worth you know an experiment like that, but uh, it uses up so much so quickly uh, given the growth and the colonies and all that stuff going on, all the coralline algae that if even in even in 24 hour period I would crash the tank, and that's going to happen with people as you grow out your reef tank. You're going to have to dose more and more and more and more often to keep that number stable now because i do have calcium reactor and a calc reactor going 24 7 i'm able to stay at that 8.5 dkh and i don't really get any fluctuations really at all like nothing it just stays stable and i verify that with the trident you know testing i think it's like four times a day or something like that alkalinity wise and i just keep an eye on my magnesium to make sure it's in the correct range as well so with that the sum up dosing calcium alkalinity in general is Keep an eye on your fluctuation, test consistently a minimum of once, preferably twice a week. And then if you find that that dip is not being taken care of with your water changes or your water changes are just not enough to keep up with it, then start dosing uh, whatever method 
two part is what I recommend most people start with, but there's a bunch of like this all for reef, there's a calcium reactor, there's calc reactor, there's calc in the ATO. There's just other methods you can use if you want, but beginner friendly, a two part is usually something that I recommend that you do. So with that, that's pretty much it. Let's go to move on to nitrates and phosphates. And uh, it's basically the same thing, testing consistently. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, I've, I've, I've said this a few times, but I'm gonna say it again. When it comes to testing your nitrates and phosphates, you have to be consistent. You have to pick a set time that is not around any kind of feeding or any kind of window where you might have some false readings coming in from extra nutrients from whatever source is right. So it's not like calcium alkalinity, you can test whenever you'll be fine. When it comes to nitrates and phosphates, for me personally, first thing in the morning when I wake up before I feed the fish, if I'm testing to kind of see where things are at. So if I'm making adjustments, We'll just use the 300, for example. Right now, I dose 40 milliliters a day of uh, the Hex NO3. So I sell nitrates and phosphates on a website. You guys can check that out. So I dose 40 milliliters of nitrates every day. That's just what the reef tank likes. Now, how did I figure that out? So basically, I was at 3 to 5 ppm, which is fine for nitrates. Personally, my reef tank likes 10 ppm. It just does. Everything looks good at that, and the tank is happy. So what happened was I was at a lower number. The reef tank wasn't that happy. So I started dosing 10 milliliters a day via the dose on the apex. It went up a little bit, tank was a little bit happier. And then I slowly worked my way up over about a month or so worth of time and um, making those minor adjustments, finally getting to 40 milliliters a day. And I've been doing that for months, six, seven, eight months, something even longer than that probably. And um, the way I got to that, it was testing consistently the same time every morning before feeding. Uh, that way I don't have, again, any issues with like kind of false reading from feeding and all that kind of stuff in the water column. And then making small adjustments in doses as we go. And again, this is that was nitrates. Do the same thing for phosphates. My particular reef tank does not need phosphates because I feed a lot of nori. My homemade fish food has a ton of greens in it, a ton of broccoli, stuff like that. So it takes care of the phosphates on its own. It's just the nitrates that I have to dose because it's just my particular setup. So again, everyone's setup is gonna be, going to be a little bit different, but that's kind of the idea behind it. So testing consistently, making sure you're doing small adjustments on both calcium alkalinity, magnesium as well, and nitrates and phosphates, these small dosing adjustments, and then you know, continuing those adjustments and testing till you get to a range in an area where you where you want to be in your reef tank and where it's happy. The last thing you want to do is be dumping in whole bottles of this and whole bottles of that and just doing a whole bunch of stuff at one time. Uh, if you're a beginner, when it comes to calcium and alkalinity, just pick one method. You don't need three or four different methods. You don't need backup methods. Just pick one method, get really good at it, and then add another one if you want, right? Like, uh, you know, for me, calcium reactor is my primary method, but I do use a calc reactor as a backup, right? And, uh, or supplement dosing. So that's pretty much it. Eight minutes, roughly. Okay. So hopefully this video helps somebody out. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions or you want to add to this, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section. You could always email me at fishofhex at gmail.com if you want me to make a video. Um, if you want one-on-one -on -one help or doing those live streams, you guys like those or those those one-on-one -on -one videos. I've been trying to get those out, the long form, like hour-long videos of kind of troubleshooting. Uh, we've got a couple more coming out for you, uh, one this week and probably one next week. And uh, yeah, if you want to be part of that, check out the website fishofhex.com, 50% of coral, 3D printing, all that kind of stuff. You know the deal. Uh, that's it. Appreciate you. Peace.